hello viewers in TV land. Um, this is Africa TV One transmitting live from Atlanta, Georgia. We are here to bring you a live coverage of the consultative engagement regarding the oil policy reform in Liberia. It's been spearheaded by the National Oil Company of Liberia, NACL. Today we have we have participants from the southeastern part of the United States of America. They are all going to be participating in this program. Actually, this is where Liberians in the diaspora will indeed have informed um, stakeholders in terms of making sure that they have a say in whatever policy that has been formed regarding the oil policy in terms of equity distribution. This is your moderator, and Fola Jaliba. Stay tuned as we bring you more interview from personalities, dignitarians that are here to give input to this all consultative engagement. Well, Israel, could you just tell us exactly what the essence of this forum and why is it that you are here? Well, uh, this is part of our national consultative process on the draft policy for the reform the sector. As you know, in uh, February, African Petroleum announced that they uh, found significant quantities of uh, oil off the shores of Liberia. Uh, that predicated uh, the president to announce that we should do uh, what we call a reform process to reform a pro uh, the sector so that we can have a set of laws that will govern the sector moving on into the future before we start to produce any uh, potential oil once it's been qualified as uh, commercial. The more I see the involvement of Liberians in the, in the reaction and then and this basically it dawned on me that we're actually making history you know, all of us were involved in this process. Well, this is a great historical time where Liberians for the first time can actually discuss policy not only within the country, but outside of the country. I'm informed that you are one of the focal persons who organized the consultative meeting where Liberians will have a tease out, making sure the formulation of the oil policy of Liberia, the ownership dimension, uh, and what goes into it, what really informed your decision to be part of the all important program. It was very basic. Uh, for the most part, the oil program uh, could be viewed in two lenses. One, it could be viewed as a blessing, or it could be viewed as a curse. All too often, these things, uh, this form of blessing turns into a form of chaos. And I thought it would be a very good idea where we in the diaspora, particularly uh, like Liberians within Atlanta or the state of Georgia, were to be. Uh, we are indeed stakeholders of our natural resources. What, what really sticks out in terms of human resource capacity, training, and building? Well, for one, I think that we can certainly train people very quickly in some of the downstream activities. We can talk about up, up, upstream and downstream activities, but gasoline stations, those are the kinds of uh, activities that I think we can really quickly train our people to get excited about uh, and to have some ownership in. We're really talking about entrepreneurship. Not everyone is going to go to work in a full-time government job, but you know, if we offer training in terms of how people can own their own gas stations and those kinds of things, it will help uplift uh, the local Liberian community and the economy where we can help improve the quality of life for, for those who live there. The state motor is the independent state-owned enterprise created by local. This is what I'm reading. NOCO is the independent state-owned enterprise created by NOCO. If NOCO is independent and then it's state-owned, I see a, 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 com a conflict in the two things. How are you independent but state-owned? They say, what should all companies do if they damage the environment? They say they should fully compensate the Liberian people. Then we should also have a, a law in place, environmental protection law, that will ensure that the brand people are protected from all of the oil spill or accidental leakages from the oil industry. Uh, who should own natural resources? And Dr. Moses, I'll let you talk about that. And so the question for me is, what can we do to make sure that all Liberian stakeholders are adequately represented in this process? What can we do? It's a long process. Forums like this are very, very important here, there, wherever librarians are. So for me, rights of women, the rights of illiterate, the rights of college grads, the rights of, 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 of the initiated, okay, have to all be recognized. Okay, we know what happens when it fails. Plenty of examples. Who should own the natural resources? We all agree that the government should own it. However, if the oil is found on the mainland, we agree that the individual should be compensated 
MAM domain, and also be provided 25% of residual income for the remainder of their life. I would just like to say how proud I am that Liberians are having this discussion now. And I understand the, the, the need to have more feedback, and so we'll do our best from our side to not only capture what we have and have to keep the lines open to receive white papers and other suggestions um, as much as we can. But I, I want to say this. We are on a path right now that if guarded right, if steered in the right way, when and if we become an oil producing nation, we will be far ahead and the blessing that is the oil will not turn into a curse. Mm -hmm.